the one that I enjoy the most is the one that says we sort of feel like everything's okay if Brother Hiles is around. One little family of three or four, a widow rearing the children alone, told me that the family sits together and every Sunday morning and Sunday night when I walk in the door here, that they sing just above a whisper, everything's all right in my father's house. Everything's all right in my father's house. Everything's all right in my father's house because Brother Hiles is here. I can recall when I was a kid going to church every Sunday and I'd look for my pastor to walk in and Sunday after Sunday I'd look at the door and he wouldn't walk in. But some dumb looking guys would walk in I never saw in my life before. Now here we have dumb looking guys walk in you see every Sunday. But I I was always disappointed. Now if we had a guest preacher I was disappointed. But if my pastor wasn't there if I didn't get to see him I felt like the week wasn't complete. And I made a few decisions years ago that I'd be in my church preaching Sunday after Sunday if I became a preacher. I've uh, showed the little lady the nursery, please, fellas, and have her use it if you would, please. That's right. Just take her to the nursery. That's right. And uh, but I and you, of course, I've told this a dozen times or more, but it, to me it's it's sweet and precious and holy. The little girl who's watching television. And uh, she went to her mother and said, Mama, is Brother Howes in town? And she said, I don't know. And the girl said, Mama, would you call his house and find out if he's in town? And the mother said, why? She said, because the television man just said there's a tornado in the area. And if Brother Howes were in town, or a tornado wouldn't dare come through Hammond. Now, to me, there's nothing quite so sweet as that. Now, if one does come through, I'll get blamed for it. If I hear one's coming through, I'm going to, what I usually do when I hear one's we're alerted tornadoes, I leave town. <laughs> but uh, there's nothing quite so sweet to me as that. One time, Mr. Moody was on a ship going to Europe. And suddenly the, <clears throat> the ship was thrown into a terrible storm. It was one of the worst that anyone had ever seen. Mr. Moody went toward the front of the ship. <clears throat> he came back. Everybody was crying and praying and screaming and in terrible fear. Mr. Moody began to smile. And someone came and said, Mr. Moody, don't you realize all of our lives are in jeopardy? Don't you realize the danger of this storm? Why are you smiling? And Mr. Moody said, I just went to the front of the ship. I saw the captain's face, and it was smiling. Well, folks, this is a heartsick old world. Watergate, heart attacks, communism, filth, disease, c pending famine. It's a heartsick old world. I'd like to tell you something. This morning, I saw the pilot's face again, and he's still smiling. And that's the reason everybody needs a pastor, I guess. Somebody ought to see the pilot's face and come to the people and say, he's still smiling. He who said to Isaac in one of the dark days of his life, fear not, he who spoke to Abraham after he had come back from fighting with the a war with the kings, fear not. He who said to Ezekiel when he was called to be a watchman on the wall, fear not. He who inspired the angel, the shepherd, the angels to sing to lonely shepherds watching their flocks by night, fear not. He who spoke the words to Mary as she heard the annunciation of the coming of the Christ child, fear not. He who spoke to Israelites pursued by angry Egyptians with uh, Egyptians on one side and the 
Red Sea on the other side, fear not. He who had placed his hand upon us 2,000 years ago and said, fear not, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, he's still alive today. This morning I thought I would just try to calm your nerves a little bit, if I could. I know we have a lot of problems in this old world. I know stakes getting mighty high, but that doesn't affect many of us. <laughs> Steak got too high for us years ago. Now, when hamburger, of course, Dr. Billings has round steak. You call it bologna, but he has round steak. But uh, he also has a lot of bologna, too, by the way. But, <clears throat> but uh, Dr. Evans said amen. But, uh, I mean, everybody's all uptight. Everybody's all nervous. What's going to happen to the country? What's going to happen? What's going to... You know how you're uptight? You're looking down instead of up. If you look up, everything's okay. Amen. I mean, the captain's face is still smiling. And he's the first and the last. No need for God's people to get all upset, nervous, and, and worry. Listen to these promises. Be strong. Fear not. Listen to this one. Fear not, for I am with thee. Hear this one. Fear not, I will help thee. Hear this one. Fear not. I have redeemed thee. Hear this one. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Don't you think the one who overcame the grave and death and the hell can take care of you in this age? Amen. Don't you think the one who could feed the sparrows who fly through the heavens and feed even the unclean bird, the raven, and the one who clothes the field lilies, don't you think that that one can still take care of his own? Oh, but you say, what are we going to eat? We're going to eat what God gives us like God's folks have always eaten. What you say, what are we going to wear? <laughs> You're probably going to wear the same thing you've been wearing for the 14 years I've been pastor of this church, I imagine. What you say, oh, what's going to happen if war comes? Jesus is just still going to say, fear not, I'm the first and the last. Nothing to be afraid of. I love those words, fear not, little flock. He didn't say, hey, don't be afraid. He said, hold it now. Hey, don't, don't be scared. He didn't say scared, but he said, uh, uh, don't be afraid. Everything's going to be okay. Don't you recall how you used to feel when us down in Texas we used to have storms? Now I mean, we could you could see a storm in Texas a hundred miles away, oh, a few miles away. <laughs> well, you could see it when it hit anyway. But but uh, we called it in Texas a cloud coming up. Mom says, "Son, there's a cloud coming up," and we had a storm cellar out in the backyard. How many ever had a storm cellar, huh? How many don't don't even know what a storm cellar is, huh? It's a cellar where you keep storms, is what it is. <laughs> and uh, Mother would say, uh, uh, on Exeter Street, had a storm cellar out in the backyard. And Mom would say, hey, let's go to the storm cellar. It's storms coming up. Cloud's coming up. Or, you folks up here don't know what this means, a norther is coming. It was worse than that when a northerner was coming. But uh, a norther is coming. And so we'd run to the storm cellar. Now, storm cellar is a hole in the ground. And usually had a hump on the top because you didn't want to, uh, so you get air in it and had a little place to get air. And you, the, the door would open, uh, is the door sort of slanting, almost flat on the ground, more flat than it was upright. And you'd pull the door up and uh, you'd walk down some stairs in a storm cellar. And to get away from the storm, you'd get bitten by a snake and, uh, and <coughs> or, a, or a spider. And that's where you kept the potatoes. You kept potatoes down because the potatoes were kept cool down the storm cellar. And you'd stay there until the storm was over. But it's a strange thing. Storm cellar or no storm cellar, if Mama was home, it just seemed like everything was okay. But I can recall time and time again when I'd be home alone. Mother worked and I'd be home alone as a little boy. And I'd look out and see a, a, a storm coming up. And oh, no trees in Texas over three inches high. And uh, you can see that thing, and you can see the horizon, and you see that thing looming like a great monster, and it come, and it's before long the winds, and then you'd see some funnels, uh, look like these little bugles that you eat, and little funnels, and then and a tornado was coming through. And I can recall being at home, and oh, I thought if Mama would just come home, if Mama would just was just at home, and then soon Mother would come in. And everything was all right. Now, my mother couldn't stop a tornado. She could create a few, but she couldn't stop any. And uh, But everything was all right. Now, this morning, what I'd like to do to my people, I'd like to say, I know Watergate. I know about Mr. Nixon. I don't know all about him, but I know a lot of I know about uh, Mr. Irwin, 
And uh, I know about Mr. Agnew's troubles. And uh, I know all about communism about to take over America, and it is. I know all about the Depression. And by the way, it's on its way. No use in worrying about it. It's on its way, whether you like it or not. It's on its way. And uh, I know all about the prime rate, not the prime rib. The prime rate's gone up more than the prime rib. But the prime rate's up to nine and three quarters, I think, now. I know. And you borrow any money, and you pay a lot of interest. And, uh, and uh, money's tight, and the dollar's not worth much. And uh, and uh, somebody said one day, said, save you, save you money. It might be worth, it's worth something again someday. And uh, I know, I know, but I'd like to reach out this morning and say to all my people, now don't be afraid. Everything's going to be all right. Nothing's going to happen to God's people that's not best for them. The one who said, fear not, I'm the first and the last, he's still alive. You, but you say, I've got children, and, and my kids over here, I love them, and I don't want my kids to face this wicked old world. Uh, I wish mine didn't have to either, but I'll tell you what. Every one of these kids over here who's God's children, if they are on us, if they're caught on top of a spider web overlooking Niagara Falls, God's going to take care of them. So don't worry. Don't fret. There he is. He still said, I am with you always. He still said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So don't be worried. Now, our Lord only spoke six times these words, fear not. That's strange, isn't it? Over and over again in the Bible, uh, you fear not. In fact, somebody has said that 366 times in the Bible you have the words, don't fear, or fear not, or don't be afraid. 366 times in the Bible. Isn't that sweet? One for every day, even for leap year. And uh, never a time to be afraid. I mean that. Never a time to be afraid. But you sit with the house. I'm afraid of the future. You don't have to be. Well, I'm afraid of cancer. You don't have to be. Well, I'm afraid of death. A preacher sat in this room last Sunday morning. A preacher. A middle-aged preacher. That means 46 or 47. A uh, preacher. Stood in this room. And last Sunday morning came to my office and said, Brother Howells, Dr. Howells, he said, I've been preaching all these years, but he said, if there's anybody in the world who fears death, it's me. I just, I'm always afraid of the thought of dying. You don't have to be. He said, fear not. But you say, I can't help it, I'm afraid. Yes, you can help it too. You can trust the one who lives in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You don't have to be afraid. And so I want to calm your nerves this morning and tell you, uh, like, like one time the emperor of Russia <coughs> was, was building the great railroad between Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg. That's not St. Petersburg, Florida, by the way. And uh, St. Petersburg. And they're trying to, to engineer it, working on the board, and trying to figure out how to get that railroad between St. Petersburg and, um, and uh, uh, Moscow. And finally the emperor came and said, Give me a ruler! And he got a ruler. He laid that ruler out, put one in St. Petersburg and down here in Moscow. He drew a straight line. He said, That's the way you engineer it. A straight line between Moscow and St. Petersburg. And that's the way you engineer Alleviation of fear, too, a straight line between you and Jesus. I mean, just come to him and say, God, you're still on your throne, and you're still my Savior, and you promised me to take care of me. Now, our Lord only six times said these words, fear not, but all six times had to do with one of three subjects. Either being not afraid of want, or not afraid of the end time, or the end of the age, or not being afraid of death. For our Lord knew that people who would live in succeeding years would fear these things more than anything else. Well, I can recall as a kid, I'd be afraid. The end of the world. The other day, I had the cutest little <coughs> cartoon given to me. I don't read the funnies. I don't know why, but I just don't. But um, uh, they ceased being funnies a long time ago. You know, uh, they got to be mysteries, and I quit reading them. But uh, not against them, by the way. But if somebody handed me peanuts. You ever read peanut? Do you really? Do you read peanuts? Read your Bible? But, uh, <laughs> peanuts. And somebody handed me the cute little cartoon strip. The first cartoon saw this little girl. What's her name? What? Lucy? Lucy was watching television. And there was a, a golf tournament on. And this is the first picture. And the, and 